Welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast by the Sisters Enchanted, where we chat magic, hot topics, personal development, and good old-fashioned life. Brew up something delicious and sit with us for a spell. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about all the exciting things that are happening in the sky, astrologically, between this Taurus full moon, the Taurus full moon, on November the 19th, through to the Sagittarius eclipse, fully eclipsed new moon, on December the 3rd. Now, you'll hear us talking a little bit here about the Gemini full moon. Now, the reason for this is that as soon as the moon is full in Taurus with a partial eclipse, it moves immediately into Gemini. And we've been in this eclipse cycle between with Sagittarius, involving Sagittarius and Gemini through this year. So that's important. So the fact that it moves to Gemini is very, very important. And Sarah and I are both Sagittarius. So are both Sagittarius suns, I'm Sagittarius moon as well. Lots of Sagittarius in our charts. So we were getting very, very excited about this whole Gemini Sagittarius dance. And we didn't mention very much in this coming podcast about poor old Taurus. So it's the Taurus full moon and it moves but very quickly as soon as it's turned full on the same and within, within sort of like very, very quickly in the same evening, it moves into Gemini. So I hope you'll enjoy the podcast and all the exciting things that are happening in the sky in this coming next two weeks. Welcome to this episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast. I'm Sarah, founder of The Sisters Enchanted, and joined today by the always lovely Sarah Milne, our program director yeah. here. Hello, Sarah. Hello to the equally always lovely Sarah. <laughs> today, we are chatting about the Gemini full moon as part mm-hmm. of this Scorpio lunar cycle. Um And we want to make sure that you listen in for this whole thing because throughout the discussion, we're also going to talk about how we can do shadow work at the full Mm -hmm. moon Mm -hmm. and why astrology is so, so, so useful. So you're going to get those tips along the way. So make sure you listen into the whole episode. And in case you missed the announcement, our Expedition Astrology Program is open for enrollment for just a few days. And Sarah is Mm -hmm. one of the teachers in that program. And it's a brand new class format, sparkly, shiny new. It's brilliant. Even though we do say, I love it. We've got got this shadow work and self-reflection all the way through. So you're not just learning astrology, you're learning so much about yourself as well. So it's super good. Mm -hmm. It's it's like Mm -hmm. so in-depth, comprehensive, Mm -hmm. and... Mm. uh, I think for the tuition fee that we have on it, it is probably the most compre- it's the most comprehensive astrology class with the most support, yeah. teacher support um, in its tuition range of astrology programs. So Absolutely. and a, yeah. a certification course as well. So you know you can go out and become an astrologer from this course, mm-hmm. which yeah it's super good value for a course at such a level and there's not many courses around I don't know if there is a course around that has that level of depth of learning about astrology for a certification level plus all that um self-reflection and shadow work built into it like both those kind of like sort of knowledge and wisdom paths in one yeah Uh, yeah no, and we do, um, our teachers have office hours. You can actually mm-hmm. go get help directly from the teachers. And we have community group where you can ask questions and get yeah. support. And the teachers go through your um, submitted assignments for the certificate mm-hmm. themselves and will provide feedback. And yeah. yeah, for the amount of support you get, it's just, it's cr- it's a crazy, actually, we're completely insane for having the tuition as low as it is. So, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. you got to register before I come to my senses. Is that the other? I'd say that sign up now before we decide before the next round actually this is silly <laughs> yeah sign up before yeah. I I like meet this <laughs> money block that I have head on yeah. for undercharging yeah. for this class yes. <laughs> <laughs> and come to my sentence yeah absolutely. <laughs> all right well that said um let's start here with in, our, in the last two weeks of the lunar mm-hmm. cycle we saw the Scorpio new moon we saw um some unexpected things maybe with Uranus. We mm-hmm. had Mercury in Scorpio. Um, we had Venus sort of bringing maybe some of that uh, 
some aspects of artistry, right? Yeah. And then also yeah. we had Saturn mm -hmm. asking us to really look at whether or not we were living our life in a way that, you know, like if our walk meets our talk or whatever, mm -hmm. how we walk or talk, that phrase. So now we're at a Gemini full moon to yeah. welcome in the two waning weeks of our lunar cycle. So that's right. Let's that's talk right. about it. So this this Gemini full moon is coming off that kind of like we talked about that all that Pluto coming into the sun, like um, so the sun in Scorpio and Pluto energy feeding the sun in the sextile. And we had this very deep, intense thinking, and you might have felt that like deep, intense, real opportunity for shadow work. And then this Gemini full moon comes off of that. And of course, in a full moon, we talk a lot about letting go of things that, don't, that no longer serve you. So that's great. If you have been doing some deep thinking and some deep shadow work, then today is a really good day to like let go of some of those things that you've decided, you know what, I'm not going to carry these forward. Then they're things that get in the way of myself. So that's really cool. And something special about this moon as well is a partial eclipse. So this is a partial eclipse. And this year has been this this eclipse season, I don't know about you, Sarah, I mean, it's been a Gemini Sagittarius eclipse season and, whoa, I've felt it. And as Sarah knows, my life has changed beyond ways I ever imagined would possibly happen at the beginning of this year. So I kind of like have really, really felt these changes of this, these um, eclipse because they're in, I have a Sagittarius moon and a Sagittarius sun. So it's all been in my kind of like, in my area. So we had this kind of, eclipse season that started in May and then there was there was the, the lunar eclipse in May then there was a solar eclipse in June and now we have the final eclipse of this season on the 3rd of December and they've all been Sagittarius and Gemini and we have this Sagittarius new moon will be a full eclipse on the 3rd of December, December. so this partial eclipse to me it's kind of like a little foreshadow it's a little kind of like it's coming so what are you gonna do with it what are you gonna do with it so yeah. what would be really good is to look back Look back and see how what happened in May and in June and now kind of because these these eclipse six seasons are like big cycles of change. Uh -huh. So like, this is the final push now. It's like so by the third of December, where did you want to be? Where do you want to be at the end of this eclipse season? Where is it leading you? And like what could you do now in this last little push? from this full moon to that to that next new moon and certainly with the full moon letting go of things has your shadow work shown you something that perhaps is really blocking you from just becoming this changed person or this changed way of life in the end in the third of december when we get to the end of this eclipse cycle so it is a really really cool moon it's a very important moon really as you say that i really start thinking back like you've mm -hmm. been here at the sisters enchanted this whole year now you've worked here mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of the timeline of things that have happened and just some of the stuff mm -hmm. we were talking about off of off recording before we started. Yeah. Like, it lines up, it? Yeah. And then that's when I, I've been having, um, some, like, it's still unsolved mystery blood mm -hmm. results for this year. And I've been doing, making some changes, which have helped. So I feel more myself, but it's mm -hmm. still not a hundred percent. Um, where like I was before and all of this started in May. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is. It is. It, it did start around that eclipse time. We would talk, we would, I remember all of these things and I was beginning to think, I'm not really right to be here. I should be somewhere else. All these things were happening at that same time in May. And we were talking about the beginning of that eclipse season, weren't we in the podcasts and in the blogs at that time? Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going to see how the that shakes out. So this will be the end of that of that series for us, and so it should be that something big and positive is going <laughs> to. This is I'm going to be just waiting around now to like the <laughs> eve of <laughs> the full moon, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. Like <laughs> my house, yeah. like I don't know, like one of those clouds apart above my house. I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> It's all over. Yeah. <laughs> like a Simpsons episode. Yeah, something. exactly. Oh yeah. It's coming. <laughs> it is coming. So I just think what you can release now in order to get that final push in the next few weeks to get the fruits of the seeds you planted for that first eclipse in May. Or if it has been eclipse, because things eclipse seasons, like they can be erratic and they used to be really feared. 
like um, the ancient people, the farmers and stuff, they used to really fear eclipse season. So, I mean, it could like, it could be the end. The eclipse season can sometimes just be all this stuff happening and then you get to the end and it is the end of yeah. that. So, and we both have so much Sagittarius in our charts. So it really was, it was always going to, and we said that at the beginning of the season too. Remember us saying, this is going to really affect us because we're Sagittarius moons and not yeah. so Sagittarius in our chart. No, you're well, not a Sagittarius moon, are you? You're, no, you're, you're, you're Sagittarius. What am I? Sagittarius, lots of things, but not a moon. Yeah. Um, I'm, some, I'm some moon and Mercury and lots of other bits. <laughs> yeah, I'm sun and I think I'm five things. or I have five yeah. things in Sagittarius. Saturn, sun. Mm. You would think I would know this, but back of my hand, alas, I do not. <laughs> um, but I have my Gemini, my Chiron's in Gemini, mm. in my 12th house. So that would have really lined up for this this loon, this eclipse season for you as well. And Chiron, if you don't know, is this wounded healer. And it's where we have these deep wounds that we can't face ourselves. And sometimes we don't even know what they are ourselves. Sometimes they're from our childhood. Sometimes they're from past lives or even ancestry. And um, the only way we heal those wounds is by trying to heal others that have the same wounds. So if you don't know what your Chiron wound is, and you can look and see in your chart, um, it's like this little kind of green key shape. You can look and see in your chart what sign and house it's in. But if it still doesn't help you, have a think about, and I've done this recently because I've just had a car in return, have a think about the sort of people that you're always trying to fix and heal because that will probably tell you a lot about that deep wound of yourself. So, Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So, well, what's interesting for me, so I'll give a little bit of my, my like side story as related to mm -hmm. this. Um, so for me, and I've talked about this before that I had really, um, like a terrible breakdown in my early twenties, like a mm -hmm. full blown emotional breakdown. And then in June this year, I had not, not like that then, then I was, it was really bad, but mm. this, I mean, I, I had a, a day where I, I just cried for like mm. four hours. I couldn't stop crying. Mm. It was just insane. And, um, and like, I haven't quite, hadn't quite been right since I would, I would say not I quote unquote, right. But like myself, like it's, I, I felt that whatever that did, mm. it busted me open and I've been busted mm. open since. And I realized in the last four months that I think that I am way more anxious than I ever let myself realize. Yeah. Like I, I thought for all these years that I um, was like, I could still see when I was anxious, but I realized in the last few months, like, oh my gosh, I have like my anxiety. It's, it's not, like, it's there. It's there mm -hmm. a lot. And it's, mm -hmm. and I, and I just, I think I didn't, I overcompensated by just overachieving and over excelling mm -hmm. and overdoing yep. and keeping yep. myself busy. And then this last few months, I really realized how anxiety ridden I am, but in mm -hmm. different, like, I, I think for in non-traditional ways, what people mm -hmm. might call traditional ways, like, um, I, I don't know, just like an over, I'm just like anxious, but about nothing in particular, but I don't yeah. feel anxious. I don't know. This isn't about me and my anxiousness, but there is an, an anxiousness there. And I think that what happened for me was that the stress of constantly being in this, um, so I guess anxiousness, it's like this constant state of arousal is what I'm in, like a mm. constant um, you know, cannot relax because something will fall apart, which I think is that that's what I'm saying with my anxiousness. I'm not worried about, I don't worry about things, but it's like a constant state of arousal. And that I think is what broke open for me mm. this year. And that, so that's interesting with the, um, all of this happening. Mm. Anyway, I'm now shadow working myself live here on the podcast. Yeah. But I don't know what well, that's doing my Chiron, but I mean, I would tell other, like, I think we help other people with that here. Mm -hmm. I tell people to live slowly, live intentionally, like rhythmically, cyclically, listen to your intuition. And I yeah. think it took me just being in this heightened state of arousal for so long. I mean, this year I, my blood was crazy. My blood results, yeah. my hair is falling out. I've got acne, mm -hmm. I had gas, um, GI problems, all of these things this year. And I think it was this constant heightened state of arousal, which is all stuff that I would tell other people like everything we teach here exactly would be like you know do these things it's going to help with that exactly so, anyway exactly. I've just shadow worked myself live in living color 
You have, and as you do that, I've come into the shadow because the sun just sort of came up right by my window and like put this strange light. As you started working yourself, I was fading into the shadow. I know it's it's true, and that's kind of interesting because we talk about the Chiron, and you are so kind of like sisters enchanted, and particularly like Sarah loves shadow work and time management, all those things, and that is very much the way that you um, you are looking to heal other people. Mm-hmm. So you kind of digress. Yeah. Chiron but Chiron is super interesting so it's not yeah like that. so yeah that's interesting so I would say that definitely kind of like this eclipse like that's very much how eclipse cycles can work though because kind of like things building up at the beginning of it and then the the that big um solar eclipse when Gemini for you and having Gemini Chiron then having that kind of like busting everything open during that time and then having the impact of change that's come off that the rest of the, the next part of the eclipse season and now December the 4th should be the kind of culmination of that. <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that is perfectly how eclipse. And for me, it was all about realize all about realizing that I needed to make the move and making the move here and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So going yeah, definitely the eclipse. So it's worth looking back over your definitely looking back like Sarah just has just demonstrated there. Look look back over how this year has been for you from beginning of may through to june 10th was the solar and then through to this 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 like eclipse shadow now and then the the final one on the 4th of december ah <laughs> i've had so many realizations i feel like i need to leave work for the rest of the day and just think but you know Maybe. <laughs> I, think, I do feel a tarot we often say when when we've done these t- astro jams particularly Anna and I it's a tarot spread but I think look out we will put we'll be putting out there a tarot spread for the end of this eclipse season so there'll be a tarot spread coming up perhaps one for this this like put it out now because it'd be quite useful to begin to look and and plan for that December yeah. the 4th so we'll put out a um a eclipse 2021 eclipse season Tarot oh, spread, I like it. Especially designed for the coming out of this season. So good. Such a useful tool. For Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. It'll be really All cool. right. So in these next two weeks here, the waning mm-hmm. half, I also see in your in the notes here, um, optimism, expansion, depth, yeah. passion, romance. Yeah. There's lots. Absolutely. So Mercury squares Jupiter. Just as the moon goes full, we have Mercury square in Jupiter. And this is one of the kind of most positive thinking aspects that there is. Because although kind of squares, traditionally, we think about squares as planets kind of squaring up in a boxing ring and having a bit of a hustle and pushing them each other into corners. But with Jupiter, everything Jupiter touches expands. So with Jupiter, there is really no such thing. I mean, there are there is a slightly challenging um aspect to a square, but it's never really challenging in like it is when you have like a square with Saturn, for example. So this kind of means that we have this expansion and opportunities. We start we'll we'll think really positively and like really want to expand our minds and learn. And it's a really good weekend to think, okay, so if I'm going to sit down and really kind of like dream the best version of myself the best life I want and this is my ambitions now let's go a step further if I was to push that even further so this is my ambition and now I'm going to go like wow so suppose like for example let's put something out the air you had an ex- like I, I want to be a nice figure skater and I want to reach regional finals then you're going to be like why stop at regional I'm going to go national finals in fact I'm going to go to the Olympics it's that kind of like um that kind of that's that kind of energy but because it's a square we have those little bits of challenge and that is be careful not to spread yourself too thinly I know when I first moved here it was very much that like I want to be in the lifeboat team like literally I want to go out to sea and rescue people and I want to go swimming every day and I want to go to yoga class and I want to go to that writing workshop and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to meet them and them and them and it was just like hang on <laughs> you can't if you do all of that you're never going to make any friends because all you're going to do is see people for five minutes a week so let's yeah. just like sit back and just be like okay I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to meet one group of people and we're just going to see how that goes. It's like that. It's like that in the mind. It's it's very much that. Mercury is going to want you to just go and, I want to learn that and that and that. I'm going to do that course, that course, that course, that course. And then I'm going to do everything. 
So just stick, with, just stick with astrology because that will be the one thing that will be able to help you with everything else. So yes, we have a, lest we forget, astrology is open for enrollment right now. You exactly. too can learn about your Chiron and do shadow work in you front can. of all your friends. You can. <laughs> stick with astrology. Just, just, just sign up for astrology and then like, um, you know, let that Mercury, Jupiter really kind of like show you how all the opportunities that there are with that and also be careful of overconfidence as well when when um and also just like uh you know just we can be a little bit kind of like yeah yeah you can you know also we might find that our because jupiter is the planet of our ideals and spirituality sometimes that might come squared up with our logical thinking so we might get a bit of that kind of like you know, hang on, my, my, my religious beliefs and my spiritual beliefs, are they really logical? Do that really make sense? I'm not sure. They might have a bit of that going on. So just kind of like focus on all of that expansion of opportunities, but keep it in check. Because when Jupiter expands too much, it can kind of go too much. Yeah, that are Sagittarius folks. We know that. Really and yeah. if the sun moves into Sagittarius. Of course, on the 21st of November, our birthday seasons are coming up. It's Sagittarius season. Um, and of course, that's Jupiter's sign. So we're going to get all of this like optimism and ideas of possibilities. If you hear Sarah and I brainstorm, we could do that. We could do that. We could do that. Oh, my God. So sometimes I think it's quite funny because I think sometimes when we talk about shadow work, I think sometimes I show you that shadow of a Sagittarius and you see it because I'll quite often say, what about this? What about this? And Sarah's like, no, okay, rain it in, rain it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we do shadow work then when you're just seeing that Sagittarius going well we can do everything and then you see that shadow yeah. going actually let's just it is well we could we could have you and I could come up with ideas for a century and I think what's so different though is like you are like creative um teaching ideas which I have those too but at this like it's just it's so interesting how you grow and evolve over time because now with the sisters enchanted we have such a great reach so many students Mm. that I try to think creative ideas as to like okay well what books could we write like what podcasts could we be or like what what media could we be featured on like how Mm. could we contribute to a magazine you know Mm. like and um and Sarah and Sarah's like let's write all the classes (laughs) And I'm like, well, yes, I want to write all the classes too. But first we have to do these other things. So exactly. Sarah and I alone in a room together, she'd plaster one whole wall with like five years of class lessons. <laughs> and I'd plaster them with five years of like blog topics and articles. <laughs> exactly. We should do that sometime. When I actually finally get over to the States, we should do that. And then we can just look and say, okay, so which of those marry up? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just throw out the ones, throw out the ones that don't that don't marry up and keep the ones that do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Everything planned for like five years out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. So as you can see, Sagittarius urges us to think big. It urges us to connect with things that are bigger than ourselves. You have that real kind of want to connect things spiritual with be- beliefs and ideals. Dream up big opportunities for yourself. And then, of course, you've got the arrow. And then Sagittarius like, will then just choose where it's going to go and put that arrow and then follow that error and sometimes to the extent of being quite blinkered with everything else around you. it can be like that when the sun's in Sagittarius so, yeah. yeah story of my life just focusing on where I'm going and not paying attention to anything else yeah, absolutely but as Sagittarius as the sun goes Sagittarius it's conjunct with Mercury which means the sun and Mercury are working together um they're very close and they're kind of forming this kind of super planet almost so that's a really We've said we've had a really like we've had this Mercury Jupiter, which one of the best um, astrological times for thinking positively. This is one of the best astrological times for our confidence and our skills in communication and confidence in our ideas, like and really kind of like so you know, it's a really good time to trust your ideas and have confidence in your ideas and confidence in your thinking for sure. So lots of positivity going on right now. I like it. Positive. And we have, also, as you said, some romance as well. Yes, um, romance. Let's talk about romance. Yeah. So Venus is in conjunction with Pluto, which means that we have the planet of our desires and love and art and beauty conjunct with this depth, this Pluto, this planet of depth. So you might get some real intensity and passion in your relationships. Remember, that goes beyond just um, romance, relate, romantic relationships. Um, but it could make you also rush in too quickly. Like if you're kind of like meeting someone new, like because of this 
it's like Venus Pluto, you might just go straight from like, you know, zero to 60 miles per hour without <laughs> you know, without realizing and you might think oh my goodness I've delved into something far too intense here and um whoops I need to out that's fine because you know we, Pluto drives transformation so if things go a little bit deep too quick and then you have some lessons to learn then don't worry about that because Pluto is all for our transformation and lessons for sure so and if there are any difficulties in relationships then this is a good time for that shadow work and to bring about healing and transformation through the challenges we have in relationships whether you're single or not if you're single then um you might sometimes when we talk about Venus and some of the um but we've got some other things that Venus is doing and you can feel a bit like, well, I'm single. So what about me? Well, it's a good time to reflect on some of the lessons that you've learned in relationships and perhaps do some shadow work, healing and transformation to prepare yourself and ready yourself for new relationships. But always remember it includes the relationship with yourself as well, which is the most important relationship of all. So true. It is. So we have all these planets as well. Right now, in this sex star, we talk about sex star, which is when they're flowing their energies into each other really nicely. And we have Mars and Venus, our sex style. So that brings us playful, sexy, confident energy in our dating and in our romantic and also in our social life. So we're going to have quite a buoyant social life. We're going to be wanting a social life, motivated to socialize with others. And again, making the most of our creative and our artistic talents as well. Then Venus is also sex style to Neptune. And that's where we, that's a really romantic, a really romantic um, relationship because it, like Neptune emphasizes our imagination and also our sensuality, that feeling like those Pisces fish that just swim yeah. and feel and they're joined and when one moves, the other moves without even thinking. So it brings that kind of energy into um, this Venus arena of romance and art as well. So, um, so yeah, we're going to really feel like we want to socialize and have fun. The sun's sextile to Saturn too. So we talked about Saturn before in last, last months one so like we're going to have all this kind of yeah I want to socialize I want to fun there's a new romance out there it's all kind of like cool but then Saturn is feeding in with the sun so there will be a little bit of that kind of like yeah 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 but remember responsibilities remember your work remember what you need to yeah. do and perhaps don't rush too quickly there so Saturn will be with all of this Saturn's going to be keeping an eye on us well it's so good because this it sounds like this really playful, like loose kind of um, mm -hmm. fun time. And this is where during the waning half of our lunar cycle, we talk about doing shadow work mm -hmm. and creating your future vision. So yeah. what about right now feels really great that you want to take with you into the future yeah. and remember that as you're setting the intentions for the next lunar cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. Like all this fun stuff that's lighting you up. Identify what can stick. Like what does the Saturn Sun relationship tell me? I yes. can keep around long term. <laughs> yeah. And if, and if you're feeling life's a little bit heavy right now and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, what about why am I not experiencing this? Then it's a really good time because it is that period of shadow work in the lunar cycle. It's a time to think, okay, so why am I not having the fun then? I mean, before I moved, I've, I've literally had more of a social life in a week here than I had in a year where I was. And I can look back now and, I, so it, and do the shadow work and it wasn't, it, it, partly it's the place, but partly it was me in the yeah. funk that I was in that was putting big like walls between me and looking for fun or feeling any fun. So if you're feeling life is heavy, then perhaps think back to when you did experience these kind of like any fun energies we've been talking about and then do some shadow work to see how you can remove any blocks that you've put up to having that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, we're rounding out this eclipse. So everybody hang in there. And if you want to learn more about understanding your shadow self through astrology and just spend mm -hmm. time hanging out with Sarah, hanging out with Anna and our other astrology teacher, Nick, um, be sure to check out Expedition Astrology. It's at expeditionastrology.com. It's open for registration for just a few more days, and then it will not be open again for months. We've yeah. revamped it. It's got a whole new look and process and um, process isn't the right word, flow, a schedule. Oh, yeah. The whole thing has just been re- reconstructed and it's really really amazing comprehensive and you get so much attention from the teachers which is unheard of uh, for this tuition so 
the workbook alone is kind of like probably the biggest workbook you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yes. Like, what is so it? Much- is 300 pages right yeah this that's for you to work through so you can imagine it's like so oh. comprehensive and that it's includes so all these wonderful activities so yeah yeah no it's awesome and you should totally yeah. check it out yes do yourself a favor and check it out yeah. and that's at expeditionastrology.com yeah. so in the meantime make sure that you follow rate review like subscribe all of those things so that you never miss an episode of the magic on the inside podcast you hear these new moon and full moon Uh, episodes when they come out. Let Mm -hmm. your friends know about it. Sharing is caring. And we really appreciate you taking the 15 seconds to Mm -hmm. leave a review or rate or subscribe because that short period of time for you means heaps to us and really helps us get the word out there as a small business. All right. Well, friends, enjoy the eclipse. And until next time, we hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. Mm -hmm.